this is Sven on the SRS channel back again and today we're gonna have a look at the WJL Toys the 1-6 scale collectible figure disguiser and uh, it's basically Solid Snake from Metal Gear Solid 5 uh, Phantom, the Phantom Pain and uh, as you can see this is the front of the box They've used the same Roman number for the letter 5 on the front there, but uh, this is an unlicensed figure, so they couldn't go with any of the names from the actual game, so they called it uh, Disguiser. Fight for one's own. And uh, this is the front of the box. You can see a picture of the face of the actual head sculpt on the figure on the front there and on the right or one of the sides at least I think it will be the boxes right side you can see a picture of the accessories in there and uh, on the back you'll see a picture of the figure itself and on the other side you just got some simple graphics and uh, warnings and uh, yeah that's it and uh, this box has a sleeve that you can take off and uh, yeah let's uh, go further in and have a look at the contents and uh, when you open the box uh, this is how everything more or less is packed down uh, on top you'll find this uh, cardboard prop here and that you can assemble into uh, a box as seen in the games with various graphics on it solid snake hides in it you can see the Diamond Dogs logo and everything on the side here. The Phantom Pain, the <laughs> the the yeah. I'm not sure it's not a part of the marketing though, but yeah, they put the Phantom Pain here. No hiding that. Uh, there's the other side of the box there and there's something similar on the other long side of the box and there's the other side and yeah you simply assemble this I'll try to do that off camera later here uh, back to the box and you have this layer of foam and here you can see some now the accessories how they are stored and in the layer beneath you have the figure and some hands I'll take everything out of the box and uh, I'll get right back to you hold on guys and uh, here is everything taken out of the box uh, as usual we're gonna go through the accessories first and move on to the figure at uh, last um, you have this gun here and no moving parts on the gun itself and it seems like the the clip comes out but uh, it's really stuck in there and I don't want to force it uh, but uh, I believe I believe this uh, clip can come out you can see the seams around it there so yeah I believe the clip can come out other than that uh, no moving parts but it's uh, nicely weathered though uh, got this gunmetal gray or black all around it with slightly wear on the gun 
and uh, yeah, that's the gun. Next accessory is this knife. The knife can come out. It's the uh, same gunmetal paint on it with some wear. Um, uh, silver dry brushing and stuff and uh, it the same goes for the sheath itself nicely dry brushed with silver to create that wear next up is his uh, Desert goggles, they're nicely weathered too. As you can see, uh, and you have this uh, cassette player and tape recorder. It's a sticker on it to make it look like there's a tape in it and even the tape recorder itself I'm not sure if you can read it through the glare but right between the green arrow there and the TPP it says MGSV Metal Gear Solid 5 <laughs> uh, nicely weathered, made in the same gunmetal paint job with the weathering. See the buttons up there, some painted on the side here with red and green, maybe some sort of light or something. And there's uh, even uh, some sort of metal loop here molded into it and uh, yeah that's that part then we have this communication device done the same way with a gun metal paint job and silver dry brush weathering and some blue paint there for it's some sort of lens uh, I checked up on Google it's a it's a hologram device for maps and communication and stuff colored in or painted in buttons here nicely molded molded in buttons here too and then moving further along you have this beautifully done night vision goggles <laughs> nice molding nice weathering done in the gunmetal grey with silver dry brushing for the wear and tear uh, some glossy paint on the lens in there I'm not sure if you can see the reflection picking up and uh, yeah, uh, with fabric straps on it, some sort, a little bit of stretch into it there. Nicely painted and detailed, and there's the inside of the goggles. Next up is his uh, gas mask, done beautifully in the same way. Gunmetal grey, silver dry brushing for the weathering, and uh, uh, green filters on the side of her, weathered too, with the same elastic straps. And uh, yeah, and here's the inside of the mask and 
we have his scarf. I haven't removed the tape bit there, but uh, uh, I don't think I'm going to do it either because I don't think I'll be displaying the figure with this on him. But uh, as you can tell, it's there is some weathering to the cloth here too. You can see some uh, sweat drops or whatever here. It's not a clean piece. Try to get some in here. It looks to be all over. Excuse me, it looks to be the same job on the entire piece. But yeah, and this is the scarf. And then you have this uh, bag piece. I took some to the belt or one of the belts on him with some metal I think it's metal I think it, it feels like metal these uh, loops here these are metal these ribbons are metal nicely done uh, I think it, it can be opened, it seems, and it is padded up with some foam in there to give the bag some volume, but uh, you can undo this strap here and put other, th other things inside it, so yeah, that's the, that's the bag goes on the back of the figure. Next up is his cigar. Nicely done too. Uh, you can see the glow or the ash there and the glow on the end of the cigar. You can see the the uh, the band or the Piece the wrap around the cigar there, and uh, yeah, that's the cigar. Uh, I also have this one. I'm gonna quickly take it out of the bag here. I probably won't be displaying the figure with this either, but uh, you can put it on the figure, and it's a catalog cut out hair to accommodate for his uh, ponytail that you'll see in a second but yeah it's some sort of easter egg uh, thing for the game I don't think it have any strategic strategy intentions or whatever for the game other than being funny but uh, yeah it's cool nonetheless nicely painted red on top hair yellowish body a little darker cream color or slightly orange for the beak hair painted nostrils the eyes are painted beautifully sharp line work hair and uh, yeah it's uh, flexible so you can on the front hair so you can put it around the head otherwise it's pretty solid and yeah, that's the chicken helmet. And then you have a small bag here with a big and a small piece of shrapnel that goes onto the head sculpt. Uh, depending on if you want the big one or the small, uh, small one, you can use whatever you want. And uh, got to check here. Uh, I think you have to take them off to use the chicken head though, but uh, yeah, I'll be displaying the figure with one of these pieces, maybe the big one, because it looks better, but yeah, you have two sizes of the shrapnel pieces here, and as I mentioned, uh, there is the cardboard box piece from the game, 
and uh, <coughs> we have two different hands on the figure it's a gun holding hand this is a relaxed hand and what I think is so beautiful with this particular hand is that they used real fabric as a glove uh, instead of actually painting and sculpting sculpting the glow into the hand uh, this is actual actual fabric wrapped around the hand and that's beautifully done and it it's a really nice touch and then we have the prosthetic arm this is the fist it's nicely weathered and painted it looks absolutely beautiful uh, they could have gotten away with so many things on this piece but they actually sculpted it with the fingers separated in there and uh, yeah a lot of attention to detail here with the weathering and paint job and so forth and so on we have a pointing hand weathered and painted equally beautiful nicely done they could have made a articulated hand but uh, uh, it would have made a weak connection in some of the uh, the, the parts there are really thin so you better be careful so you don't break them especially the fingers on the prosthetic hands but nicely done good job by WJL Toys and you can see there's some writing stamped on on the top here uh, or sculpted in really nice attention to details but uh, it's impossible to read that and the third additional cybernetic hand sculpted to the nines painted to the nines weathered to the nines it's beautifully done but again be careful with the fingers uh, there's some really thin pieces here I can tell so I understand why they didn't make this uh, prost prost prosthetic hand uh, articulated there. they made the right choice by sculpting individual hands before we go on to the figure I quickly sort of uh, assemble the box it's just a matter of flipping out all the panels like so and then you can can uh, use a piece of tape or something to hold everything down but uh, it sort of works okay without tape too and you can just uh, push in these pieces to remove them on both sides for him to look out of but yeah he basically hides in this box and the guards apparently just walk past without noticing at all so yeah there's the box put that to the side moving on to the figure uh, I'm gonna do first thing first mention the head comes wrapped in a plastic piece here that you easily remove and that's that let's move the camera a little bit back here to get a 360 view and there is the front of the figure I haven't put in the shrapnel piece yet but uh, we'll get to that and there's the front of the figure 
There's the side. There's the back. And the other side. Let's move the camera in closer for a better look. So, moving on in on the figure here, a bit of focusing. Uh, I'm going to move straight over to the hands on this one. There's the fourth prosthetic hand uh, made to hold the communicator or whatever. You also see a watch there. And there's the gun holding hand done in the same way with the real fab fabric for the glow for the glow. And yeah, here's the head sculpt. It is beautifully done. Look at that paint job, the sculpt work, look at the scars and the details here. Nicely done. See the ponytail. And yeah. And the the uh, straps for the uh, uh, eye patch are painted in and sculpted. But the eye patch itself, it's a separate piece that's glued on. And here you see the port for the shrapnel piece on top of his head there. And yeah. Uh, focus. The figure is really well done. Uh, nicely weathering, you can see the sand and dust and stuff on the pouchers here. Uh, plastic uh, clips here though, but they usually are plastic in real life. I've heard people mention that they would love metal for the clips or the hooks here, but I'm fine with the plastic. Mm -mm. Yeah. The knee pad here. Uh, the <clears throat> what I think is funny is that they took the time to make fabric glow for one hand when they could have sculpted and painted it. But with the boots, they just sculpted their plastic, sculpted the boots, and with molded in lices. Leicester and the threads underneath really nicely done but uh, yeah it's, it's some nice weathering on this figure uh, blood veins here on the hand more sand dust and weathering here back on the figure Beautifully done figure. It's a shame that things like this comes from unlicensed products. To be honest, I would love to see more like this from Hot Toys and yeah, companies that can afford to license their figures. Uh, elbows single jointed, the knees are double jointed. Uh, I looked up the body on uh, YouTube, now on Google, I uh, think I read something about it's some sort of hybrid body, but uh, maybe I was mistaken. But uh, yeah, nicely done. Uh, 
the figure doesn't come with its own stand, so you got to uh, got to fix one yourself to put it that way. Uh, let me put some other stuff onto the figure, and I'll get right back. Okay, so yeah, I put on some pieces. I added, uh, ended up choosing the smaller shrapnel piece to insert on the head there because the big one stuck out a little bit too much, and uh, yeah, uh, it will look cool like that. Put the cigar in his gun holding hand here, and as you can see this communicator and this particular hand it's made so that you can just easily drop it in there and uh, yeah I put the gun in the holster here I put the tape recorder on the belt here it was the only place on the belt I can actually put it because everything else is blocked off by pouches and stuff here. Uh, the knife is supposed to be on the belt down here according to images on Google on the game model. But uh, then this pouch here on the back will be so off-centered it looked stupid. Uh, I saw some of the pictures with the bag further up, uh, but it was so difficult to get it hooked into these two small loops here. Besides, I saw some pictures where this pouch is down here on the belt anyway. That means that the knife couldn't be there, not enough space, and uh, so I hooked the knife sheath onto the upper or lower black piece here on the harness it sort of end, ends up in the same spot anyways but uh, while fiddling with that uh, pouch and the mechanism for hooking it on if it this will stay in my hand on the way to the camera I broke one of these loops off for the hook mechanism and uh, yeah and that's why I absolutely hate the uh, metal pieces for that uh, hook shit it's so thin that it just had to happen and there's also a hole let me get the tweezers if I can hook it on there is if you can see broke off right at the hole where the pin is supposed to go through at the bottom but it uh, hooked on anyway so it will be okay but yeah be careful with those pieces on any figure that has this most usually it's the army figures and stuff that has this type of hook, uh, hooking mechanisms it's a hook that goes around the belt and there's a pin that goes through to secure it and there's a hole on the uh, hook where the pin is supposed to hook into and it absolutely snapped right at that hole there's nothing there to hold the stuff together so yeah um, I'm not gonna worry about it because uh, it doesn't it doesn't show anyway so uh, yeah as I said I put the knife on, to in the, on the back there uh, and uh, yeah if you're not using the cigar and he's gonna hold the gun or pose him with the gun you just put the gun in the hand to put it that way and cigar in back in the box uh, I guess but uh, if you're not gonna display the figure with any 
of these three accessor accessories, the mask, goggles or the night vision goggles. Uh, the goggles you can sort of hang around his neck. Uh, but uh, the goggles were used along with the scarf and I'm not gonna put the scarf on so there's no reason to use the goggles either. Goes back in the box. The gas mask, mm, I'm sure I could hook it onto something or maybe wrap it up carefully, remove the foam insert in the pouch there and put the gas mask in there but uh, that doesn't make any sense because it doesn't you don't see it anyways so that goes to the side however you have this nice night vision goggles uh, you can put them on the head like uh, like it's uh, zoom like uh, he's wearing them on the forehead but that looks stupid too uh, you can optionally hang it somewhere but uh, yeah it will be in the way and it doesn't it doesn't show on the game model in the game you could fit it in the pouch but again as with the gas mask it doesn't make any sense because uh, you don't see them in there anyway so that goes back in the box along with the long shrapnel piece and um, not using the scarf that goes back in the box that's the same with the chicken head and you can only put two different hands on him anyway so therefore other hands have to go in the box and uh, <coughs> the cardboard box the camouflage box uh, you could, since it's, he doesn't come with his own stand, sorry, you could use it as a prop on the shelf, like so, and have the figure sitting on it or something like that for display effect. But the box will take up a lot of space on the shelf, so that one, in my case, goes back in the box too. Which leaves me with what you see here. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to display the figure with the communicator or how I'm going to display it, but the figure itself goes on display. Uh, so we'll see about that. Uh, but yeah, uh, communicator may go back in the box too if I choose to put him in a post where he has uh, the cigar and the prosthetic arm or hand or if I'm going to put him in some action pose or something but uh, yeah that's basically how I'm gonna what I'm gonna put on this play though but uh, it's a beautiful figure guys uh, it's the solid snake character from the Metal Gear Solid 5, the Phantom Pain game, and uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments guys, and uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, and uh, like the video if you did, and I'll catch you on the next one guys, bye bye.